Hey headphone people, welcome back to the channel, Mr. Eric here. Got a quick little review for you today. Now I have to admit, I haven't been able to spend the time with this device that I would have liked to, but sometimes that's just the way it is. So what we've got today is the Woo Audio WA11 Topaz Portable DAC Amp. And you can see this thing's, it's like a pretty chunky little guy. Um, it's reasonably powerful, 1.2 watts into, I think, 32 ohms, and then it's about like 100 watts into 300 ohms, so, or 100 watts, 100 milliwatts into 300 ohms. So it's it's got some decent power to it. Um, it's got a built-in Sabre chip, and um, yeah, let's dig into it. Let's see what you get, and then we'll talk about the sound. Okay, so, um, as usual, right, I've I've got used, you know, it came to me used, it was loaned to me by uh, a friend of the channel, and I, this is just kind of like what it came with. So I, I think this is mostly pretty standard stuff that it comes with based on checking on the website, but I'm not 100% sure um, what everything actually is. So you've got a nice little pouch here for travel normally I'm not into these but I think for this device I would use that because um, it is a more expensive device I mean brand new it's about like a thousand eleven hundred dollars so like you definitely probably gonna want to protect it when you're traveling with it it also came with this case um, I'm not sure I think this is probably stock but it's got a very like 3d printed feel to it in my opinion I did not actually use this but it does feel pretty tough and um, I so I mean maybe if you're gonna be beating this thing up and carrying it around a lot you know this thing might be something to use I I didn't use this though um, you've got several different cables that appear to have come with it I think these ones are are the main ones that are actual Woo audio cables and they feel pretty good. You got USB-C to USB-C and then you got USB-A to USB-C. And then um, this little guy was included. It's just like a lightning to USB-C. I don't think this is a Woo audio cable, but I'm not 100% sure on that. And then you've got kind of the, the charger that comes with it. And, uh, you know, it's just a regular charging brick. There's not much to talk about with it. It does have a couple of like USB-A pieces on there. And then it comes with, you know, different attachments. So you can, depending on where you're at in the world, you know, you can, you can get yourself plugged in and charged up. The unit itself um, is quite nice. It's very dense. Um, it feels well built. You can see it, as far as inputs, outputs, and stuff go, you've got two USB-Cs on the back, one for charging, one for data if you're using it as a DAC, and then you've got a 4.4 in, which is um, you know if you want to send a signal from another DAC into this. On the side here, you've got a couple of little switches that you can switch, um, DAC versus line in, and then high-low gain mode over here. And then you've got on the front a standard quarter inch and then a 4.4 balanced. Uh, the website does claim that this is a fully balanced amplifier. And then on uh, you get the volume wheel kind of up on this corner here and that feels really good. So everything feels really nice with this. And uh, on the bottom what I think is kind of a nice inclusion is it's got like a micro uh, suede or or microfiber kind of like pad here um, which that means you can set it on your desk and you don't have to worry about it like scratching around and things like that I appreciate that I don't want to have to use like an extra case or something like that so I appreciate that I can just like drop this down um, and lay it on my desk like that you can also leave it oriented like this and again thoughtful they put a couple of little silicone like rubber pads on there so it'll stay in place when you set it down um, which is just good design is smart uh, so I like the design I it feels good um, and then to turn it on all you've got is just like a little button on the top here and when you turn that on uh, you can see it tells you like your battery life remaining it is touted to have a seven hour battery life in my experience 
I'm not sure that it would quite get there based on my use. Now, I never listened to it like seven hours straight and I didn't, um, you know, time it or anything like that. But just as I watched the battery drop, it seemed like after just a couple hours of use, it would be down to about halfway capacity. So I don't know if that's indicative of like it would only have a four hour battery life or if it you know if it takes longer to drain out as you get to the the bottom there so i'm not sure on that uh didn't get to test that fully but just something to be mindful of so let's get into sound now and um i brought along my you know my x can which is kind of my standard portable at this point in time for comparison both in size and sound so coming from something like the x can the topaz the wa11 topaz was noticeably um, better defined noticeably better uh, image separation noticeably better spatial presentation um, like a more three-dimensional sound uh, so kind of all around an improvement the one area with the topaz that I felt for me seemed a little off is I felt like there in the upper frequencies there's like a little bit of smearing I would say like it, it I don't know exactly if that's the right word to use it I just didn't feel like I was getting like that pristine definition that I get with some of my higher end gear, like the Socrus uh, 2541 and the Burson Soloist. Like, the, it certainly doesn't match that level of clarity and detail. Um, and I also was using a, for quite a bit of comparisons, I was using a Modi Multibit DAC with a Hagerman Tuba amplifier. And again, I felt like, especially in the upper frequencies, um, the tuba just did a better job of resolving and having a clear, crisp image. Um, so when you're thinking about pricing and it, what the value of this thing is, you know, I this and the Socrus 2541 are both around the same price, right? Brand new and probably used. I mean, I don't know what these things go for used, but like thousand dollars. Let's call them a thousand dollars. But in that comparison. I'm not a huge fan of the Socrus's built-in headphone amplifier. Like, I don't think it's all that great, but I would take the Socrus with its built-in headphone amplifier over the Topaz, I thought, um, when I was doing that little comparison. I would probably take the Modi Multibit and the Hagerman Tuba over the Topaz um, when I was making that comparison. So. I don't know. I guess what I'm saying is I'm not super impressed with this product. Now, again, knowing that it's portable and that it's reasonably powerful, I, I mean, I think you got to decide, is that convenience enough for you to accept that it's not going to match the sound quality of like a regular desktop setup? That's really the question that it comes down to here. Is it a good portable? Yes, it sounds better than the X can, uh, which it should because the X can can be had for like a couple hundred bucks at this point. Is it, does it sound better than a Mojo? I don't have a Mojo on hand anymore, but based on my impressions and my remaining fondness of the Mojo, I'm not sure. I'm not sure about that. So, uh, I go into this, uh, or I guess I'm leaving this review, again, understanding that I've only had time to spend a few hours with this device listening, but it it left me a little unimpressed, I guess is where we'll leave it. So just to note, the headphones that I mainly was testing the WA11 out were the HE1000 V2, the LCD5, and the... Uh, Focal Alex. Those were the those were the three main ones that I was trying out with, and I would say I came uh, out with similar conclusions uh, across the board there. If if I was going to try to pin down the sound of the W the WA11, just kind of the overall characteristic that I kind of took from it is that it's going to it's it's a fairly neutral, clean 
sound that it's leaning towards. I didn't feel like any of the frequency responses were really boosted or that it had like a specific flavor that it was trying to push. It, it seemed pretty neutral to me. Um, but the the again the note was the upper frequencies i just didn't feel like came through with the clarity that the rest of the ranges did perhaps um the nice design and form factor is going to be enough for you but for me if i was going to pick a device that was just a capable mobile wired amp deck, i would definitely go for the mojo if it was me and especially now that there's a mojo 2 out number one you're going to be able to buy the original mojo for like probably like 250 bucks which at that price it's an amazing device or the mojo 2 is probably still going to be cheaper than this and i don't know i haven't had a chance to test that yet i really want to but i think that's going to be a screamer device um or you know you got the new griffin i haven't had a chance to try that yet but that's the upgraded version of this and then that have bluetooth and uh, who knows what the sound quality that's like. Again, I hope to have a chance to try that in the near future. So, Woo Audio W11 Topaz, mm, I don't know. I, I'm not sold on it. I'm not sold. So, but it's not a bad device. It's just for the price, I think it's hard to justify. And uh, I think that's where I'll leave it. So, if you found this useful, if you uh, have questions, comments, drop those down below alternative opinions drop those down below if you want more headphone content consider subscribing and i hopefully will see you in the next one